hey welcome back to the lecture so in this lecture let's understand device tree structure device tree is a collection of device nodes in a tree fashion a device node or simply called a node represents a device nodes are organized in some systematic way inside the device tree file the nodes what's there inside the device tree they have parent and child relationship okay and every device tree must have one root node basically you can consider root node as the beginning or starting point of the device tree so basically the root node is required because a reference to some node down the tree is derived with respect to the root node so that's the reason the root node is required actually a node explains itself that is reveals its data and resources using its properties by using properties you explain a node okay in the device tree file what are the properties you can use it is decided by the specification so you should consult the specification document to understand what are all the properties you can use this is actually a graphical representation of a tree structure so there will be one root node and uh, the root node actually it doesn't have any name it just identified by a symbol that is forward slash and a root node has its own properties so about properties we'll discuss later okay i have a separate lecture for that here if you consider this this is a root node and all other nodes of the device tree will be under root node so here you can see that these are actually the root level nodes there is a cpu node there is a memory node to explain the memory of the hardware there is a uart node to explain the uart controller of the hardware there is the i2c node okay which explains the i2c peripheral of the hardware like that all these are actually root level nodes and as i said it's a tree like structure so a node can have couple of child node for example if it is a dual core hardware so a cpu node may have two child nodes and each node explains a cpu core an i2c controller node may have its own uh, uh, child nodes okay so i2c this node explains the controller of the hardware and these nodes explain the devices which are connected to the controller here you can see a parent and child relationship so here i2c controller which is there inside the soc is a parent and the devices which are connected to that uh, i2c controller uh, over the i2c bus can be called as children this is a children node so here this node actually explains the mpu 6050 accelerometer and gyroscope sensor and uh, this node explains the lm75 temperature sensor which is connected to the i2c bus and the i2c bus is actually governed or controlled by the i2c controller so like that you can group your hardware information in a tree structure by using the device tree file so this is a graphical representation so if you want to convert this information into device tree file with the device tree syntax then it would look something like this so there will be a root body this is the body of the root node which will be represented by uh, the curly braces so here this is the beginning and this is a root body inside the root body you mention root level nodes for example here node 1 and node 2 these are root level nodes or you can also call it as soc level nodes and you can explain any node by using properties for example here node 1 can be explained by 
collection of different properties. It could be a string property to explain its name or something like that. You can use integer property to mention any integer data. You can use a string list property to mention arrays of string, something like that. So as I said, to understand more on properties, we have to check the specifications. So there is no other way. And device tree also supports Boolean property. So a node can have n number of child nodes. Here you see this is one device node. This is another device node. But here there is a parent and child relationship. This device node is a child of this device node. We don't call this as a root level node. Okay, so this is not a root level node. This is just a child node of node 1. Here there are two device nodes, and these two are children of uh, node 2. And here child 2 is a sibling of child 1. So Linux also uses such terminologies like child, parent, sibling, like that. So we'll understand more on this okay, when we write some code. You can also explain the child node using different properties. This is a overview of the device tree structure. So there will be a root body and inside the root body you mention root level nodes. So here node 1 and node 2 are called root level nodes and each root level node can have different number of child nodes. All right, so the device tree has a single root node of which all other device nodes are descendants. The full path to the root node is just a forward slash. All device trees shall have a root node and the following nodes shall be present at the root of all device trees. So one CPU node and at least one memory node. So if you want more details about the CPU node and memory node, so you can consult chapter 3 device node requirements. Now let's move forward. Let's understand how to write a device tree. So remember that you most probably be writing device tree add-ons or overlays for your board related changes, but not for an entire SOC. The SOC specific device tree will be given by the vendor in the form of device tree inclusion file that is DTSI and you just need to include that in your board level device tree. So while writing the device tree it's better if you follow the modularity approach. Alright so before writing device tree or device tree node for your project you must understand device tree writing syntax. So all these syntaxes are explained by the device tree specifications. So there is a certain syntax to write the node name, node label. And so while writing properties, you must follow certain rules. So there are standard and non-standard property names and different data type representation. So there are different types of properties, isn't it? A property could be an integer, it could be a string, it could be a boolean data. So different data types are possible and the specification explains different data type representation. All right, so now let's examine the device tree file of our BeagleBone Black hardware. So we can understand many things here. First of all, let me go to the main device tree file, DTS of BeagleBone Black. Here, as I said, it has got three uh, include files, right? DTSIs. And you already know that this is a SOC level DTSI and these are board specific DTSI. So if you go to the SOC specific uh, device tree file, okay, so you see a root node here. You see here is a body of the root starts and it ends here, okay at the very end of the file. So in between all what you see here is root level nodes or you can also call it as children of root node. So all the device nodes related to the on-chip peripherals of the SOC are populated 
inside the root node and these are the properties of the root node to explain the root node now let's go back to our board specific dts file here also you see uh, one more root node right here also you see a root body but please note that every device tree has got only one root node that's why this is not a new root node so this root node is created here to override some of the information of the top level device tree file so in this scenario so this is a top level device tree file which provides you the real root node isn't it and in the board specific device tree file you can override some of the information which is given by the top level device tree file by creating some dummy root nodes this is created just to override some information for example if you go to the top level device tree file so here is a compatible property so this is a property which may be explaining the compatibility with the hardware we'll see later what's the meaning of compatible property so that's a very important property now you see this actually stores a string value so the board level file has overridden that compatible property here basically you can think of bone black dot dts as a front level dts file from which you can override details which are there in the top level ui tree file so here the compatible property of this file is overridden and the meaning is changed by adding board relevant information and also you can see that the model property doesn't exist here right so that's why model property has been added to the root level node now let's search for sgx here and you see this is a device node okay so this represents the sgx peripheral of the soc now if you want to modify any property here let's say your board is using this peripheral and if you want to uh, change some of the property then don't edit this file why because the same file is going to be included by some other board specific device tree file isn't it so that's why never edit this top level device tree file okay instead what you can do is you can override this node in your board specific device tree file that's what done here there is a reference made to this node there's a reference and the status property is changed here the status property was disabled but since this board is going to use this device node okay it has turned it on later we'll understand what is the meaning of this syntax and what's the use of status property and all but i'm just giving you an overview actually that's why the key takeaway from this uh, video would be you know never edit the top level device tree inclusion file but in your device specific or board specific device tree file you can always override the device nodes by making a reference to it with that note i would like to end this lecture and in the next lecture we'll explore some syntaxes to write device nodes